All right, so we're turning our attention now to football on the Sportsmax zone. CONCACAF World Cup qualifying action continued on Thursday. Let's have a look at the full results. So Jamaica defeating the Dominican Republic 1-0. Haiti a 2-1 win against St. Lucia. Three goals in the win for Honduras against Cuba. Panama beat Ghana 2-0. Four goals for Costa Rica against St. Kitts and Nevis. And in that draw, no goals between El Salvador and Puerto Rico. Well, a noteworthy result for Jamaica's narrow win versus the Dominican Republic, with the Reggae Boys beating Caribbean opposition in a World Cup qualifier for the first time since 2015. However, Reggae Boys coach Heimer Hall Grimson still felt his team could have been better. I think we, we, we could have done better just in tempo in general, for sure. Uh, and when you don't have the tempo to close players down, it doesn't matter what system or formation you're playing. That, that goes without saying. I told everyone before the game, this Dominican team, Dominican, uh, Dominic, and the Republic. Republic team is a good passing team. They are good on the ball. And if they are given time, it doesn't matter what formation they, we have, they will always you know, find the, the, the good passes around. So, you know, might have been something in regards to, we could have been more defensive, for example, but we wanted to play two strikers against them. And also just thinking ahead to the Copa, this is one of our plan Bs if we need a goal to play the two strikers and get the ball in the box, etc. So it's something that we need to drill. We need to give time. And sometimes things don't work out perfectly in the first time, but hopefully next time we do it, it will work better. All right, here to give his reading on the match is our in-house football analyst, Leji Williams. Leji, you were not in-house yesterday, as a matter of fact. You got the exciting assignment. You were at the game. Um, Coach just spoke about the slow tempo of his team. And during that press conference, he did mention it a couple of times. What do you make of that assessment from Coach? Yeah, I think it was pretty accurate, actually. I'm actually glad that because I asked that question, which he answered to, so I'm glad that he brought up the, the slower tempo of the team in and out of possession before I asked about it, because that was something that stood out to me immediately from watching the game. But, you know, usually when I talk about Jamaica, you know, there, there's a lot of negativity around it, so I want to get, put it out there first that some positives before I get onto the negatives about yesterday's performance. Yeah. So, a positive one, I think the defence was really solid. The, the team was forced to put out a couple of last-ditch tackles, but I think all in all, generally, they limited Dominican Republic to not much. They didn't shoot that much, only six shots throughout the entire game, only two of them in the 18-yard box, and the last of those came in the 24th minute. So I think that Dominican Republic didn't really get a chance to impose themselves on the game. Jamaica did a really good job of, you know, stunting them and keeping them at bay. So that's a big positive for Jamaica. At no point did it look like Dominican Republic were going to score. Um, also, I think that Jamaica won their deals really well, which is a kind of a byproduct of how they defended that well. So I, I think in the midfield and defensive areas, even in the attacking areas as well, Jamaica did a really good job of getting really stuck in and impose themselves physically extremely well to really keep out Dominican Republic and Dominican Republic and really you know, stop them from, as Coach Hal Grimson said, they're a good ball-playing team, stop them at source and really prevented them from doing what they wanted to do. And the third positive of the game, most important one, Jamaica won the game, you know, so that's a big positive. That they, should they, be the first. Yeah, they, they, they got the, they <laughs> got the, the third. three. They got, no, but I, I have to lead up to it, the reasons why they won the game, you know. So that, that was a big positive. Um, they also were pretty good at the transition as well, but that's a, that's a lesser positive. So now I, I want to get into the negatives. That it's a longer list, you know. So the negatives, are, as Coach Hal Grimson mentioned, the team was, in terms of their tempo, was pretty poor, in my opinion. Uh, I, I think, especially in possession, because after watching the game, when I was watching the game live, I assumed that it was more so an issue with the shape, why they weren't knocking the ball around, especially in build-up. But after going back and watching over some of the game, there was some issues in the first half in terms of 
the shape, but that was adjusted pretty early on into the game. And I even prepared a picture here for this is a image. It, it took place pretty late on in the second half, so it is a bit different. It's a bit difficult to see, but if you can make out the yellow shirts, there's Richard King with the ball, right? The, the, the deepest lying defensive midfielder with Bobby Reed in this instance. Yes. And then there is another midfielder basically adjacent. So a simple passing regimen that a lot of elite teams do would be for the centre-back to pop it into the defensive midfielder, pull it to the other defensive midfielder really quickly, and then either he has a chance to play to Mikel Antonio, who is a little bit off the defensive line, or put it in behind for, in this case, would be the Shane Beckford. So none of that happened, of course. Jamaica just decided to play the ball backwards, and it ended up in a, a, a not good build-up opportunity. But it, when you look at it, there's only really three or four Dominican Republic players really being committed to the press. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing that Jamaica would have problems dealing with because when you speak about Croy Anderson and Bobby Reed dropping in, it created a 5v4 scenario where Jamaica yeah. would have the opportunity to play out comfortably. But yes. because the tempo was that poor, they didn't get a chance to, or I wouldn't say they didn't get a chance to, they didn't really execute the things that their shape would allow them to do. So I think that was really poor. The, the shape, as I mentioned, improved as the game went on. And there were a lot of other bad things about the game, but, you know, all in all, as a team performance, I think those are the things that Jamaica would need to focus on going forward. Yeah, and one of the things that you didn't mention is, maybe not saying persons, would be Ronaldo Cifas, because coach had a lot of praises for him in that same press conference that you attended. Uh, he was asked about him, and coach really praised his incredible speed. He even attributed the goal in a joking manner to, of course, Ronaldo Cifas and what he contributed on the pitch. Yeah, I think Cifas was pretty good. It's his best performance in a Jamaican shirt, in my opinion. We saw a couple of glimpses of it in the Nations League when he broke away with his speed but couldn't apply the finishing touch. It was somewhat similar yesterday, but he was much more effective because he got the ball much more. I think in a game where, as I mentioned, Jamaica struggled to build up, him being a transitional threat and being able to take on his man in a 1v1 scenario, in addition to being isolated so often, it led him to being able to create chances in open play as well. So I think that he was really the linchpin in terms of Jamaica's attack because they struggled so much to build up and create chances from elsewhere. So I, I, I think he was a clear vote for me if I was supposed to give a man of the match award. So yeah, I think Cephas had a really good performance, pretty unluckily. Unlucky also not to get a goal, but yeah, he's definitely a shining light coming out of that game. And I think not only does it show that without a Demari Gray, where people were concerned if we would lack that pace and attacking impetus, we'll have a player that can come in and add that. And then also someone, even if Demari Gray is playing, who can come off of the bench and impact the game in that way as well. So I think it was a welcome performance from Cephas. Yeah, I, I want you to expand on that point a bit there, uh, Lej, because his playing time for his Turkish club... Uh, Anka Regochu, who he plays for, I see that his playing time has diminished, which, you know, I'm not seeing the league, so I'm not too sure why he isn't getting as much playing time now as he did, or towards the back end of the season as he did maybe in February or March. But um, his performance excited a lot of fans who saw him yesterday, but as you just referenced, part of the reason why he was a starter yesterday is because a lot of the first choice players weren't weren't available so it makes you feel having seen how well he played yesterday that as you just mentioned there is some depth shaping up in this squad that could help them when things get tougher not only for the world cup qualifiers but the copa as well that comes up in the summer yeah, yeah i completely agree with that and you have to mention that there more than likely will be players who would be naturally first choice absent from that Copa squad as well. You think about maybe a Leon Bailey, a Dujan Richards, who probably will be absent from the squad. So I think Cephas coming Why to the Why would they show, be absent from the squad? Well, I'm here to talk about the game yesterday, so I can't really get into that. We'd have to get comments from maybe their agents, maybe Coach Hal Grimson, if he comes back on the show, then maybe he can expound further. But okay. for me, I, just, just from a assumption, I would assume that they won't be there for the Copa squad. So mm. I think Cephas would be a good mm. addition to the squad yeah. to really supplement what they I know Leon well. Bailey says he has taken a break, but there is no definitive word on how long the break is. And I would think that he would want to play Copa. And the fact that he was on... at the match yesterday, I think it's a positive sign. 
Yeah, I mean, he's probably just supporting his, his team, his teammates, you know, they're still like brothers to him, so... But, you I know, assume. one of the things my sister always says to me, it's the hardest thing to sit and watch a cricket match when you know you can be out there bowling and, of course, batting. Maybe after yesterday, he'll feel like he want to run again. Well, hopefully, as in Hal Grimson has mentioned that he thinks that Leon Bailey is Jamaica's best player. I also agree with that sentiment, so... Jamaica's I, I, best player? Yeah, I agree with that sentiment. But, but wouldn't that be challenged on performance for Jamaica? Yes and no, mm -hmm. because if you think about it, someone would say maybe Demar Gray is our best player, but where is he playing his football as opposed to Leon Bailey, who was just a linchpin in his team, getting a top four place in the most difficult league in the world, mm -hmm. as opposed to our Ethan Pinnock, who has been a very consistent centre-back in the tough, toughest league in the world. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, but people would like to mention names like Antonio. I'm glad. We, we'll get onto that in a second. But, yeah, yeah I, I do think that Liam Bailey is Jamaica's best player. Hal Grimson has also said that Liam Bailey is Jamaica's yeah. best player. Yeah. So we're, it would be great for you to have him back in the Yeah, we're almost out of time, but you were telling me off here that you weren't pleased with Mikel Antonio's output yesterday in the game. You thought it was below par. Yeah. Um, well... Producer, give, give me three more minutes, please. I'd like to say something. Because I don't, I don't like to be proven right when it comes down to certain things. But when I am proven right, I'd like to speak about you it. You don't like to be proven right? No, because that means that I didn't learn anything from the situation. When you're wrong, so you're you just always something. wrong then. So no, every I'm, time I'm, you I'm, predict I'm, wrong, I'm, you're I'm, good. I'm usually right, you know. But I, I, when I'm wrong, I learn something from the situation. Yeah. Only but, because the, you the, have limited time. The, the producer ahead. says we don't have three minutes, so you'll have to, I, I, you have to fast I, I, track your I, I, points. I'll hurry up. Yes, so, okay. you know, Dan Arlovsky, who was a former NFL quarterback and he's now an analyst, he groups players into three categories. Players you win because of, players you win with, and players you win in spite of. Now, you know, pretty early on into my career, on June 15th, 2023, I came on the show it was the first time I caught any sort of real flack. You know, I got over 100 comments on YouTube and Instagram when I spoke about Antonia. What I said is that what we have seen from Antonia is not conducive to success for Jamaica. At the time, he had scored three goals in late 2022, and people were really high on him. So when I said that, people were obviously upset. So then now speaking about Antonia, I'd just like to point out that, one, Antonia has not scored a goal since for Jamaica. Two... The player that I wanted to play instead of him, Shamar Nicholson, a homegrown player, in his last 763 minutes of football for Jamaica, has scored six goals. In Mikel Antonio's equivalent of that time, 558 minutes, he has only registered one assist. But, you know, Jamaican people like to, when you get something new, they like to push it forward instead of propping up your home talent. I'm just hoping this will be an example of pushing your home talent instead because as I alluded to with Dan Arlovsky's assessment, Michael Antonio is becoming a player that Jamaica wins in spite of, not a player that will win because of. Mm. That's all I'll say on that matter. Mm. Yeah, well, we're out of time, Lij. I'm sure we'll have a lot more time to discuss Michael Antonio and what he offers to the Jamaica team and uh, Shamar Nicholson and what he offers to the team as well because yes. he's been pretty prolific recently. Lots more World Cup qualifying coming up over the weekend. We'll um, review them on Monday's show. It's break time, though. We'll be back. NBA and more coming up on The Zone.